Hi everyone, my name is Jesus and I will be talking about Zoric desalination plant. So what is it? It is the world's largest and most advanced reverse osmosis desalination plant running in Israel right now. It was built by the Israeli Desalination Enterprise or IDE and it will cost 500 million dollars or it cost 500 million dollars because it was finished in Israel in 2013. It produced a new benchmark of 624,000 cubic meters of water daily. It will provide clean and potable water for over 1.5 million people. To put that in perspective, this plan could bring drinkable and potable water to the people of Phoenix and Mesa put together. This plan will comprise 20% of the municipal water demand in Israel. So reverse osmosis technology. What is this technology? It's a purification technology that uses semi-permeable membrane to remove large particles from the water. The reverse osmosis can remove many types of molecules such as salt and bacteria to produce potable water. And I will show a video later on that will show how this video can es essentially select the big particles from water to be removed. This new industry benchmark is essentially a reversion of the natural, natural flow of osmosis that we all know from our biology class, you know, it goes from an area of low concentration to a high concentration. Well, this process reverts that solvent's natural flow by the application of external pressure. What this external pressure, the key element of this external pressure is the straining or the size exclusion, which as we have already mentioned, it excludes big particles such as salt and bacteria. Um, uh, like I said, the video would demonstrate uh we'll demonstrate here a very a, a better explanation of the re reverse osmosis technology water there's one word for it but two ways to describe it there's water we drink and water we can't drink more and more of us are consuming this drinking water which represents only an infinitesimal part of the resource available on earth in 20 years 47% of the world's population live in areas subject to serious water scarcity. And yet, 40% of us live near the coast. What if getting a mouthful of seawater could one day become enjoyable? What if we could actually drink seawater? Let's see how this is possible. To protect the marine ecosystem, seawater is pumped at a speed three times slower than a fish swims. This water is then filtered to remove all particles such as algae and sand. After this stage, only molecules of water and salt remain. The salt water is then sent at a very high pressure through an extremely fine membrane. The pressure exerted on the water during this process is equivalent to 100 elephants standing on a manhole cover. This is called reverse osmosis. The energy produced by this process is partly recovered and reused to operate the plant. For every two liters of salt water pumped, we obtain one liter of pure and demineralized water. The other liter of water, called brine, is twice as salty. After being treated and diluted, it is returned to its natural marine environment. The pure water is enriched with mineral salts essential for human health. And the water is then distributed in the drinking water network all the way to the tap. Today, more and more plants are desalinating seawater, providing certain countries with nearly 60% of their drinking water. Desalination is a solution to meet the 21st century's water requirements. In 2015, desalinated water will already represent more than 2% of water consumed, and thanks to research and innovation, the technology is improving every day. All right. And I don't know if you guys heard about what she said about energy recovery. Most of the energy used in this process will be recovered and used for the operation of the, of the plant itself. You know, and why is this important? I've always been an advocate for realism and altruism. What do I mean by that? I mean, it's very, it's very nice and uh, innovative when we talk about all these futuristic technologies that would uh, essentially, you know, bring our virtual world and merge it to our physical world. All, th all this is very nice and very futuristic, but we have, I believe, bigger and realistic problems right now. 
such as, you know, the scarcity of water and food. As I've mentioned in previous discussion posts, it is our duty in this rising technology era to primarily care for the essential needs of the many rather than try to meet the dispensable demands of the few. I found this very good quote that goes a little bit like, our job is to make sure that even as we make progress, we are also giving people a sense of hope and vision for the future. I think this is very true. I think this is very true for, for our future, you know, for our kids' future, our grandkids' future. And make sure that the world that we leave to our descendants, it's a good world. A world that they can live in and thrive. Like I said, I believe that we can all make an impact. Right? It doesn't matter how small. You know, it doesn't matter if all you're doing is just being cautious of the water you use when you take a shower. That That's changed. That's an impact. If we, if we can all make our little contributions, it actually adds up at the end. I know it sounds tacky or cliche, but it, it's true. It is, it is important that in our quest for improvement, we look for technologies that can better ourselves and our lifestyle rather than, you know, unnecessary technologies. We should look into technologies more like agriculture extension and water expansion, water distribution, society inclusion, all these technologies that will better our world. It is important that we find our legacy and whatever legacy that we're going to leave, make it a good one. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you for listening.